Over the last six weeks, I've been reading, preparing, and then preaching on how we must relate to one another as the people of God, the church. One of the interesting but disconcerting difficulties I learned more about was our predisposition to read and interpret Scripture through a very hyper-individualistic mindset. Basically, we're prone to ask how a particular Scripture pertains to me as an individual as our first question towards interpreting Scripture. And although we want to have a personal application of God's Word, that's not the primary lens through which we begin to understand and interpret the Bible. What it means to me is not as important as what it means and says about God. I'll give you a fundamental example. In our language, the word you can be both singular and plural. In the Greek, they differentiate. Most other languages do differentiate. And if we're honest, we do as well. The tension of you doesn't work for us, so we come up with y'all or youans. Therefore, while reading the Bible, we typically miss the difference between singular and plural and will almost always read the word you as something that pertains to us individually. I don't have the time to cover all the different scriptures where this occurs and can be extremely confusing, if not problematic, or even heretical. But I will encourage you toward a relationship with the body of Christ that should help avoid these interpretive errors. Make sure you're not reading the Bible alone. Now, I'm not saying you have to have someone physically beside you while you read the Bible. God knows I have to have absolute silence to read and comprehend anything. But what I am encouraging you is to a robust community of believers, which you freely communicate with and share what you're learning about from Scripture. In a recent article that I was reading about how John Wesley read the Bible, it describes what I'm talking about as reading the Bible in conference with others. Others could be books from authors that are no longer living, or it could be actual living people you converse with, but you're open to hearing something that may be different than your current belief. And I'm not talking about historical creeds or essential beliefs, but other areas of our lives where the Bible has something to say if we're willing to hear, different than maybe what we believe. I love this quote from the article. It is vital that we do not limit our dialogue partners to those who are most like us or those with whom we already agree. We should remain open to and at times seek out those who hold different understandings. Otherwise, we are not likely to identify the places where our present understanding of something in Scripture, usually shared with those closest to us, might be wrong. If we want to be people of the Word who read and understand it correctly, then we must be willing to do the hard work of reading the Bible outside of the echo chambers of our own minds. The Holy Spirit will help us as we yield to His direction and pray for His illumination, he will also put people in our lives that can help us. And I want to encourage you, all of you, to make sure to spend time in God's Word alongside other people in the body of Christ. As always, we're better together. <laughs>